Okay, so welcome to this next video in which we are discussing the HIV life cycle uh, and antiretroviral drugs. Okay, so we're in the process of discussing how the HIV virion gets into uh, the um, cell. Okay, right, so how it infects a cell. So, we've just discussed chemokine receptors, and there are two very important chemokine receptors when we're discussing HIV, which are the CCR5 and the CXCR4. Okay, so let's just remind ourselves of where we've got to. So basically, if this is the phospholipid by there of the cell that is about to be infected by HIV, then what we've seen is that it needs to have CD4 on its surface. That's an absolute requirement. Okay, so here is CD4 in orange here. Okay, and basically the HIV virion comes along. Okay, so let's say we have our HIV virion here. So here is the viral envelope. Here then is the uh, P17 matrix proteins. Okay, underneath that we have the nucleocapsid, the P24 capsid, which then contains the two pieces of mRNA and our three viral enzymes. One, two there. One, two, three, rather. Okay, uh, so then what we have is our important protein complex, which is on the viral envelope, which is uh, GP41 and GP120. So basically the GP120, which is here, binds to the CD4, that's the first stage, okay, and when it binds to CD4, GP120 undergoes a conformational change that then allows it to bind to a chemokine receptor, which is its co-receptor. Now, there are two possibilities here. There is the CCR5 and the CXCR4, okay? Now, both of them can be used by HIV Drains, okay, but generally, when you first get infected with HIV, you are infected with HIV strains that are known as R5 strains because they use CCR5 as their co-receptor. However, once you've had the infection chronically, what seems to happen is that HIV seems to undergo some sort of mutation that then changes it into an X4 strain. Okay, so basically, if you have the infection for a very long period of time, what seems to happen is the HIV seems to gradually mutate so that GP120 ends up using CXCR4 uh, as its co-receptor rather than CCR5. So initially, the acute uh, infection seems to uh, be an R5 strain, i.e. it needs to use CCR5. But then after you've had the infection chronically, what seems to happen is the HIV HIV virions, your population of HIV virions which are inside of you seem to gradually evolve so that they um, use CC, CXCR4 rather than CCR5. Okay, right. So, both of these are G protein coupled receptors of the rhodopsin family. So, let's put this here. So, here is the 7 transmembrane receptor here, like so. And I'll put it coming over like here. So here's the amino terminus, and here's the carboxylic acid terminus. So what's now going to happen is the GP120, once it's bound to CD4, now has a binding site for the co-receptor here, which is either CCR5 or CXCR4. So this I'll just call it a chemokine receptor. Okay, and then what's going to happen is that the GP120 will bind to the chemokine receptor, and when it does, a conformational change of the GP41 occurs, and it is then going to expose a fusion peptide. Okay, so let me show this happening. So, what we'll go to is something that looks like this, then. So we'll have our lipid bile there here. Okay. Uh, which then contains the CD4. And I'll continue colouring this in so that it's uh, hopefully nice and understandable. Okay, so CD4 will have an orange here. Okay, and now I want to colour in the lipid by there in a special colour. So these two layers of lipids, I'm going to colour those in purple here. Okay, and you'll see why I'm doing that in a moment. Right, we then have our uh, chemokine receptor here, 
Okay, so here it is, like so, with its seven membrane spanning alpha helices. Okay, here's its amino terminus, and here is its carboxy terminus. Okay, and now what's happened basically is that our GP120 is bound to both of them. Okay, so this is GP120, but now what will have happened is that GP41 will change its position relative to GP120, and it will now be sort of over here. So let me colour in these in separate colours. So let's have GP120 in turquoise here. Okay, so in turquoise this is GP120. So let me label this up as well, and I'll label up CD4 whilst I'm at it. So this is CD4. This is GP120. Okay, and then we've got GP41 over here, which I'm going to colour in in um, orange. No, I've got orange. I'll colour it in green. Okay, so here is GP41. And basically what GP41 is going to do is it's going to extend a special hydrophobic portion known as a fusion peptide here. So this is going to be part of GP41. So I'll colour it in, in green. Okay, and this is called a fusion peptide. And what it does is it disturbs the uh, membrane of the cell, basically. And it's going to promote the fusion of the cell membrane with the viral envelope membrane. And now what I want to do is I want to go from showing the viral membrane just as one there. So remember, in this picture over here, it was quite confusing because I'd shown the viral membrane as just one line, and then I'd shown the cell membrane as two separate lines, stressing the lipid bilayer nature of it. I now want to draw my viral membrane more uh, like I've drawn the cell membrane, because it is, after all, a lipid bilayer as well. So here are the two layers of my viral envelope, okay? So this is not one representing the viral envelope and the other representing the capsid. The capsid will be within this. This is me now drawing the viral envelope as a bilayer rather than just as a single line to represent the bilayer. Okay, so I'm just doing this to parallel it with the um, lipid bilayer of the cell that I've drawn. Okay, then still within here, what you'll have is the matrix proteins, the P17 matrix. Now, what colour should I do that in? Blue, I think. So here in blue, this is the P17 matrix. Okay, and then inside of that, you then have at the nucleocapsid. Okay, right, and I won't try and... Well, actually, maybe I will. There are the two pieces of mRNA. Here are the free enzymes. Right, okay, so what's now going to happen is that both the membranes are going to fuse together and then the P17 matrix will break down and the entire capsid will move into the cell. So let's try and show this. So basically what's going to happen is like so. The viral uh, membrane is going to fuse with the cell membrane here. Okay, so let's say this represents uh, the inner leaflet. Okay, and then I'll show it as a bilayer again to stick with that picture as much as possible. Okay, like so. So this is all membrane, basically. And now what's happened is the uh, P17 matrix will break down and in comes the nucleocapsid. So the P24 capsid here, and what should we colour this in? We'll colour it in green now. Okay, so this is the P24 capsid. And then within the P24 capsid, you then have the two pieces of mRNA and then these three enzymes. Okay, so in comes the whole nucleocapsid. And remember, nucleocapsid is a word that means the capsid along with all of its precious cargo containing the genome. Okay, right. So now what has happened then is fusion has occurred. Okay, so before we go any further with discussing how now uh, the HIV nucleocapsid is going to take hold of the cell, I want to discuss certain antiretroviral drugs which work by preventing the fusion of the HIV virion particles with uh, the cell membrane, basically. They're going to be fusion inhibitors. Okay, so the first one that I want to talk about is a drug called Maraviroc. But before I discuss it, I want to give some motivation for its discovery, basically. Okay, so, basically, if you look in the white Caucasian population, 
basically there are some people who are resistant to HIV infection okay so even if they are exposed to the virus they don't actually get infected with the disease and when you actually look at their uh, the reason try and find the reason why they don't become infected with HIV easily what you find basically is that they have loss of function mutations so LOF stands for loss of function mutations in this protein for CCR5 basically the CCR5 protein okay so remember when you initially get infected with HIV nearly always the initial uh, HIV strain that you get infected with will be an R5 strain i.e. it will need to use CCR5 to gain an entrance to cells usually you become the um, the um, genetic pool which then allows the evolution to CXCR4 so usually you only find X4 strains within people who have had HIV for an extremely long time basically and what's happened is that the virus has mutated uh, and evolved basically because of the selection pressure within the body basically to that form but generally the form that actually uh, you will get infected with acutely is an R5 form okay so it will need CCR5 to be able to enter cells now basically you find some people who have loss of function mutations in both of their genes for CCR5 and therefore have no functional CCR5 and these people show no pathology at all they're completely fine and better than that they are resistant to HIV infection they cannot be infected with HIV V, which is of the R5 strain. Of course, they could be infected in principle with the X4 strain, so they're not invulnerable to HIV, but usually infection is through the R5 strain, so they do show great resistance to infection uh, with HIV. Okay, so the fact that losing function of this CCR5 gene has no pathology basically it doesn't cause any problems and it stops you from becoming infected with the HIV means that there is a great potential drugs companies absolutely love that basically that it means that we can knock this protein out we can send in a pharmacological agent which will just kill that receptor okay and it will cause no pathology or at least it should cause no pathology if we're specific enough for that receptor and uh, it will stop HIV infection so this is what they did the drug Maraviroc okay is a drug which binds to CCR5 and stops GP120 from being able to bind. Now it's not a competitive antagonist, okay? So it doesn't bind to the receptor at the same site that the GP120 would bind. So the site that the GP120 binds to CCR5 is known as the orthosteric site, okay? So the site where GP120 binds to, oops, binds to, I'll have to turn that into an I, uh, to, binds to uh, CCR5 is known as the orthosteric site. Basically, Maraviroc binds at what's called an allosteric site, so a site other than the orthosteric site. So it's not a competitive antagonist. It doesn't bind to the same site as GP120. It binds elsewhere, and by binding to this allosteric site, so if I just make a simplified picture, so if we just simplify the... Um, CCR5 down to a blob like so. This is the site, let's say, where GP120 binds. So this is the orthosteric site. So basically, what will happen is Maraviroc will bind somewhere else, okay, to an allosteric site. So let's say this is Maraviroc here binding somewhere else, which is called an allosteric site. And by binding to that allosteric site, maybe it will induce some sort of conformational change in the orthosteric site that means that the orthosteric site can no longer bind to GP120. So basically, it's an allosteric inhibitor of CCR5 rather than being an actual competitive antagonist. Okay, right, so there's one fusion inhibitor, and by, you know, by giving this drug, which stops the GP120 from being able to bind to the CCR5, in principle, you therefore stop the HIV virions from being able to enter the cell, because without GP120 binding to CCR5, then you can't get the change in conformation of GP41, 
<laughs> which then causes the fusion of the two membranes. Now, there's another fusion inhibitor, and I think I might try and, uh, and well, I'll get a new piece of paper, in fact. Okay, the other fusion inhibitor is a drug known as enfuvatide. Okay, so, enfuvatide is the next fusion inhibitor I want to talk about. And basically, this is a drug which binds to GP41, so its target is GP41, and basically, it stops GP41 from being able to change conformation to produce the fusion peptide, and it stops GP41 from being able to fuse the two membranes together. So remember, in order to get membrane fusion, what you need to happen is you need GP120 to bind to CD4 and then to its co-receptor, that triggers a change in conformation in GP41, which produces this fusion peptide, which then fuses the two membranes together. And Fuvatide basically binds to GP41 and prevents it from fusing the two membranes together. Okay, so it also stops the fusion of the two membranes. So both of these drugs, Maraviroc and Enfuvatide, can be used to try and prevent the uh, virus particle from being able to uh, fuse with cells and therefore stopping uh, HIV virus particles from entering the cells. In the next video, we'll move on in the tail of the life cycle and look at now that the nuclear capsid is within the cytoplasm of the cell, what's it going to do?